Hello everyone, Dr. David Perlmutter here. Welcome to the program. Um, I've talked quite a bit uh, about the dangers of antibiotics. And again, let me just be clear that there is certainly a time and a place when we need antibiotics. They can be life-saving. We recognize that our own Centers for Disease Control and Prevention indicates that about 30% of antibiotics used in America are used inappropriately. So prescriptions written for reasons that really are not justifiable. We generally think that the risks of antibiotics include the creation of antibiotic resistant organisms, making it difficult to treat certain infections. And as we've now learned, there are risks imparted on the gut bacteria uh, that happen when antibiotics are used. Otherwise, you know, we generally consider that taking antibiotics isn't going to have an effect on our cells because, hey, our cells are not bacterial cells. But it turns out that the mitochondria within each of our cells, the energy uh, harvesting part of our cells that powers the cells, you may have as many as a thousand mitochondria in every brain cell, may have been derived from bacteria. In fact, that endosymbiote ther uh, theory was developed by Dr. Lynn Margulis in 1968. So there's many characteristics uh, of the mitochondria that look a lot like bacteria. For instance, the DNA of the mitochondria is in a circular pattern, which isn't like it is within our cells. Uh, and many other factors make us think that in fact these mitochondria were once free living bacteria. And new research is actually demonstrating that certain antibiotics, certain very commonly used antibiotics, may actually damage mitochondrial function. When we recognize that mitochondria are really important uh, considerations in things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, for example, then this adds a new level of relevance in terms of our considerations with reference to how safe our antibiotics might or might not be. Let's take a look at this study. This is a very intriguing study and it's entitled Bacterial, uh, rather Bactericidal, I'll explain, Antibiotics Induce Mitochondrial Dysfunction and Oxidative Damage in Mammalian Cells. Bactericidal means it kills bacteria and what the researchers are telling us is that uh, these antibiotics are disruptive to the function of the uh, mitochondria. They took human mammary cells and they gave them, uh, they put in their environment, uh, cipro, ampicillin, or canamycin, uh, which is an aminoglycoside. These are the fluoroquinolones, the beta-lactams, and the aminoglycosides are very commonly used uh, classes of antibiotics. When looking at the reactive oxygen species, or the free radicals, if you will, the percentage change over control, uh, you see in the untreated group, which is at the very left side of both of these graphs, the gray, uh, that there was no increase uh, of these reactive oxygen species. But when the Cipro in green, the ampicillin in tan, and the canamycin in red were given, a dramatic increase in the production of these reactive oxygen species, or free radicals, at both 6 hours and 96 hours. Looking specifically at hydrogen peroxide, again, uh, a pretty dramatic increase uh, production uh, at the 96-hour point. Looking at the damage to fat or lipid peroxidation, uh, that happened uh, more acutely and then did uh, tend to taper off uh, at the 96-hour point, but something actually uh, very uh, intriguing happened here. What could cause this dramatic reduction in the damage to the lipids uh, or, the, or the fat, the free radical damage? And what happened was, they added something to the uh, experiment by putting NAC uh, in the environment. So what we see here is that uh, NAC was able to reduce the damage uh, to the fat brought on by the free radicals in the presence of these uh, antibiotics. Similarly, when looking at 8-OHDG, uh, that's a marker of damage by free radicals uh, to DNA. Again, a significant reduction after NAC uh, was added. The researchers stated that with the belief that antibiotics specifically target bacteria, the consequences of how they interact with mammalian cells have largely been overlooked, despite instances of known adverse effects, including 
ototoxicity damage to the ear, kidney damage, and tendon damage. In other words, we've always been taught that the antibiotics have no effect upon our cells, uh, but only on bacterial cells. And again, as I mentioned, this endosymbiotic theory that mitochondria were once actually free living bacteria themselves, uh, that we've got to begin considering these potential damaging effects upon our mitochondria from commonly used antibiotic, uh, antibiotics. By giving NAC, the researchers found that some of these damaging effects could be abrogated or ameliorated uh, while having little effect on the ability of the antibiotics to do their job, and that is to take care of getting rid of dangerous bacteria. So all in all, a very interesting study. So this is an eye-opening report, isn't it? Uh, it reveals that, at least in the laboratory uh, and uh, in, the, in the cells that were studied, these human mammary cells, that some very common classes of antibiotics actually and significantly damage mitochondrial function, and we see a dramatic increase in the free radicals, the damaging free radicals uh, that are created uh, when these cells are exposed to uh, the, this mitochondrial toxin in the form of commonly used antibiotics. Beyond that, uh, I think what was very interesting is that the mitochondrial function was preserved when an antioxidant was added, a, an off-the-shelf antioxidant that is available in health food stores called NAC. So there's no real recommendation here about using NAC when you take an antibiotic. I don't think we're able to connect those dots yet. I think, though, the, the main take-home message here uh, is that we've got to be judicious with our use of antibiotics and really practice under the idea of, above all, do no harm. Now that we understand that mitochondria may be at risk when exposed to antibiotics, it adds yet another level of our concern about the capricious use sometimes of these types of drugs. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I think it's a really uh, interesting study. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter.